it, a, a, it's a needle. It's going, you know, it's going on into your skin. I, originally, we were doing it right under the skin, not into the vein. And I don't know, it just felt, it felt weird. It felt like another step up. It felt definitely like another step up or two steps up from taking an occasional red pill. There's obviously yeah. physical advantages to take in testosterone, EPO. But I think the part that we don't ever hear about is the mental and emotional strain. Did Can it? you share a little bit about how this double life affected your mental health, your relationships? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was really hard. It was really hard. You definitely had two lives. You know, you had this, yeah, you were known as a professional bike racer. And you had this one side of you. And then you had this big, big, big secret, you know. Uh, you know, my wife knew about it at the time. That's it. That's it. A few of my teammates, it wasn't like you really took spoke about it, you know, at the dinner table there with a the team. But uh, yeah, a few teammates, my wife. But it was it, it I don't know. I grew up I grew up, my parents definitely instilled in me the the difference the difference between right and wrong. Uh and you know, when you do make a wrong, which will happen, you know, you write the ship as quickly as possible and, you know, with your head held on and you do the right thing. Yeah, that so it just bothered it bothered me the whole time from the minute from whatever the spring of 1997 you know, until the end of my career. It's, it was, yeah, it bugged me. It bugged me. Having that dual life, didn't like, yeah, you kind of, you had to have two faces. You had to do two faces. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and the whole, you know, and also like cycling is extremely selfish. Well, you have to be so focused on yourself, your health, this, that, weight, diet enough rest, everything else gets pushed back, right? And all of that can wait till I'm retired. So it's just that extra pressure in the double life. I don't know. You know, I rolled up my sleeve and like said, okay, this is how it has to be done. So it has to be done this way. So, okay. You know, so be it. You know, turn turn my head a little bit and, you know, put these feelings in the back of my head. But just keep pushing them back. Just do what you got to do. It's, this is the way the sport is right now. And so, so be it. So be it. You touched on the 1998 Festina affair. From my understanding, and people yeah. I've talked to who doped around the time, this is when doping changed from something that was administered from the teams centrally. Two teams could no longer take the risk, and now doping became something that each individual rider now was responsible for running their own mini program. You guys had a, a system, or I think it was Armstrong's Gardener, if I remember, it was Motoman that was working. Talk to me about the, the change from it being team administered to these individual programs. Was that difficult to manage? Did you think about opting out of it at this point, or was it just I'm in? Yeah, I went from like team administered, like fully, like they were fully in charge, to then then basically like them pointing us in the right direction, you know, a little bit from the outside. But you need to take care of it yourself. Yeah, uh, it. It changed a lot of things, definitely. I mean, the stress level went up another notch, for sure. I mean, yeah, you had to go pick it up sometimes, wherever that was. And that was a pain, super big pain. I get, I get so nervous doing it, so nervous. You know, I didn't I didn't have somebody to go do that for me. No, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't like it. It felt very, yeah, dirty, dirty. Yeah, when when you had to go do that kind of stuff or, you know, later in my career when I was blood doping, like having to take these like secret flights over to Madrid to see this guy who freaked me out of Fuentes. Like, yeah, hated it, hated it. The blood doping became kind of a way to get around the EPO tests, if I remember. EPO tests, they started talking about the possibility yeah. to test for EPO at around 2000. Yeah, in the year 2000, they started talking about it. Uh, they talked about it, maybe coming to the tour, but definitely in uh, for the Olympics. So, so yeah, before that, before that, there was no EPO test. You know, you, you could take it five minutes before a test and, you know, not a problem, unfortunately, but yeah. So they, a test came out, a test came out. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, the rules of taking EPO via the doctor, the team doctors, they told you yet, I mean, taking less, we were taking it instead of under the skin subcutaneously that put it into the vein. Smaller doses, search straight into the vein, it would be in your system for less time. The idea of an evolution of doping, it's like, it seems like it went from testosterone 
And then as it evolved, it, it gets more severe, it gets more seedy, it gets more intrusive. So you go from testosterone to now having to inject yourself. You go from having to inject yourself under team supervision to now having to go to these kind of clinics to pick up produce yourself and do it at home. And then the EPO tests come in and it seems like there's another threshold or line crossed again because now you're having to fly and getting your blood taken out of you like a vampire and watching it get put back in. That just seems like... I've spoke to athletes on the podcasts and they talked about just that time you had to think when the blood was dripping back into you. That's a lot of self-reflection time in an era without being distracted by Twitter and TikTok on your phone. You're just sitting there thinking about the quality of your decision. That must have been really hard. Oh, brutal. Whether it was going in or coming out, you know. So same thing when you're taking your, you know, giving giving a bag of blood. You're just sitting there and like, yeah, what am I doing? Like it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But this all slowly happened. This didn't happen overnight. It was like little small steps. And then, you know, year after year, you get a little bit older and wiser. You learn the system better and you're like, okay, this is, this is what I need to do to compete. Like if not, you know, the other guys are doing this. This is what I got to do also. So again, like roll up the sleeves a little bit more and like just dig in a little bit harder, harder. And so if you like this video, click on this one. I think you like that too. And subscribe to the channel because we've loads more amazing content going up. And it's not as windy.